reason I put that up is I'm cross posting on a lot of classes. Okay. Cause I'm realizing like, I don't know why I never thought about this. Maybe it's just because of this environment it makes sense. There's a lot of stuff that's obviously relevant across different classes. Okay. Um, that one I did for my illustrate, really for my Photoshop class, Photoshop 101. And then uh, it made sense for my illustration class. It also makes sense in here. And the reason it makes sense in here is that we're going to do a color thing with this figure stuff. Okay. And the way we're going to do it is a Grisai technique, which is what that technique is, where you take a very solid drawing. I grabbed an Al, uh, Aaron Limanek drawing or Limanek, I don't know what his name is, um, uh, to paint it up. And the reason it goes so fast is because there's a good, strong value system there in the drawing. Okay. And we're going to do the same yeah, thing with our character. I'm getting noise from somebody. Um, over break, I, I, I did a commission. And um, I did the uh, thing where I did a really like, like a really good sketch and then I just painted it over it. Yeah, like on an overlay layer? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, They're not really nice. Yeah, the thing with that technique that I like about it and the reason it's been around for so long, <clears throat> you're, um, and I might've mentioned this before, I don't know, we haven't really started talking about color and value yet, but <clears throat> you're juggling one ball. <clears throat> so you're going in and you're just really tricking out that that value drawing or whatever painting or whatever right so if you go back and look at a lot of that old master stuff <clears throat> they did the whole painting in black and white like completely finished out so they're yeah. just concentrating on that one thing let it dry then they start glazing colors over it and assuming the values underneath the trick with that you guys when you're doing this when we start doing this which i'm going to start talking about today is um don't go to pure black. Like always stop at about a nine or somewhere in there, okay? Because the color, whether it's in the real world or not, because I do the same technique with acrylic, I do it with oil, I do it with everything, okay? Digital, the way I work digitally is very, comes out of traditional painting, okay? Yeah. Um, so if I do that with acrylic, I'm gonna do the same thing. <clears throat> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, Xerox the drawing or print out the drawing. I'm going to wet media, wet mount it down onto illustration board or map board or whatever I got. And then I'm just going to float colors over that full value drawing. Uh, or it could be at underpainting or whatever. It goes quick. You know what I mean? Yeah. I forgot yeah. with the, uh, with the stuff, the mat, with the mat finish that you put on the sketch. Yeah. You put watercolor over that or is that like a gouache oil thing only? Well, you could, um, <laughs> you, can, you can go gouache over it and, and even watercolor the thing is is like with watercolor and stuff like that so i'm gonna shrink it down a little bit so i have i'm using this ratio just so you know <laughs> that's mean i hate hearing myself um <laughs> um what, what, what was the question again oh wet mounted down mm. you can go watercolor over it the, the, and i like doing this it's a technique that i started i just kind of stumbled on because I'm always experimenting. And I had a gessoed page in my sketchbook, right? And I started, you know, these guys showed up, it's in my sketchbook, but these guys showed up in the fife and drum outfits, you know, when I was at lunch. I'm like, cool, and I started doing little paintings of them. And then the, and, and matte medium or gesso, acrylic gesso are gonna kind of behave the same way, where it doesn't really want to stick to it. It makes an interesting mark making. It's different mark making than watercolor usually does, and I like it. Um, and then it isn't going to stick. So I can keep coming in with a damp brush and I can keep wiping things out or I can go, I don't like that whole part of color and I'll wipe it out. It's a nice way to kind of find your color. Then I'll take some matte medium and I'll spray that down and it'll seal it. And then I'll put another layer, just, I'll just squeegee a layer of, um, matte medium over it again. And then I'll start going to acrylic and start building it up that way. And then I might go squeegee a layer of, uh, clear gesso onto it. And the only one I know that works for this is Liquitex. That gives it a grit, and now I can start going in with Prisma or whatever I want. And I can just keep building. I could go in oil. I could go in whatever I want. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I got to do a demo of that. It's just that right now, like, I got to go out tomorrow and do a live demo. Those take the better part of the day. Um, I'm just constantly cranking out demos right now. It's just what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> like, I wanted to go through a lot of you guys' stuff over this break, but the break, I just got no time off. I was just trying to catch yeah. up and i'm still not caught up can i request a demo <laughs> sure 
Um, so a technique I've been really interested in learning that I can't really find much on is um, the way that Paul Felix does his uh, foliage. So um, oh, okay. specifically like the foreground, middle ground, background and the tonal separation. Um, I just kind of don't understand how you would block those lights and darks together to get that type of depth. Oh, okay. Like, That's simple. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that totally makes sense. Okay. Also, because, okay, yeah, because his stuff, and by the way, his stuff, I think we could just do like a little analysis of it. Okay. Um, yeah, we can do that. I've actually been asking people to give me ideas. Like, I have to get to them. I have to get the essential tutorial stuff that I'm doing, you know, first. And then I'm trying to jump in on that. And what I'm realizing now, and I've always kind of known this, but like when I go, I have enough things in my head with this stuff like the landscape one I just posted you guys I go oh I need to just find a drawing I go find a drawing. I look for through mine first I couldn't find one I like for landscape I go pull one and then I can just riff that thing in real time so if that actually goes pretty quick then yeah. I just have to I just have to uh, edit it and then I have to render it and then I have to upload it and that whole process takes I mean takes me an hour or two to do the demo but then it takes me four hours to get it edited rendered and uploaded right yeah so I'm just trying to keep them running tomorrow. Hopefully the weather up here has been like snowing, raining, foggy, and I need to get outside to do some landscape demos. And I'll post those here too. Cause I'm going, well, it's still drawing. It might not be digital drawing, but so what, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, and by the way, it'll, it'll speak to a little bit of what you're talking about. <coughs> Cause we're going to have to break up that landscape into maybe three values to start. Right. Yeah. So if you look at Paul Felix, you know, he's got this very strong, I always call it theatrical uh, flats. Like, you know, when you go see a play. Yeah. And they do those flats. Out. Yeah. That's kind of how I think of it. The great thing about Paul Felix, where I think a lot of people fail, is that Paul Felix makes it feel very um, illustrative and soft and a lot of depth. And what I see with a lot of students is they do, and it's not bad, we're actually going to do this where you go, let's do a one, two, three value thing. So they'll do the dark value in the foreground, uh, middle value, and then lighter value, right? Yeah. But then they leave it very like that. And it's like, okay, it just looks like a theatrical set now. I, I'm not, that, that doesn't really pull me in as an environment. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Paul yeah. Felix's have feeling and, and softness to them and, and beautiful drawing. They don't feel like a Viscom drawing. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to break out of the um, the theatrical type of thing where, like, yeah. you can very clearly see, like, which parts are which. Like, I kind of want it to feel like it's actually leading into the next, like, like I want the foreground to feel like it's on the same plane as the midground. Like, yeah. you can kind of walk through it. And um, looking at a lot of, like, the Lilo and Stitch sketches that Paul Felix did, I, I want to kind of figure out how to do that. But like, it's at a level where I can't like break it down. I can't reverse engineer it, if that makes sense. Like, yeah, that totally makes sense. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's just, it's such a, it's at such a high level that like, I can't yeah. see where the process began or where it ended. And I'm kind he, of- He began probably with the three, three value block and probably. Um, okay. Um, and then I don't, it's hard to explain. And then you start, start, it, it, then it starts this process of, and I'll go over it. I will do something on it. But it starts this process where you go, once you get that there, and then you go, oh, I, I can go a little, I can do a little of this over here. It's just like the video I just posted, that landscape video. I didn't pre-plan that, okay? I just approached it the same way I would probably a, a, a plain air painting. Yeah. Right? Where I go, okay, I got a sky, and then I, I got this whole kind of monument valley, desert, um, Grand Canyon-y kind of thing. So I can just do a mid-value wash over that whole thing. And then what do I do? Lights. And I start going darks. And I go, okay, it's going way out there. And I know in this kind of environment that way out there in this type of orangey environment, it can go kind of purpley. And oh, I can get a little bit of ochre in here. And you just keep falling down. Like I could just keep going on and on on that video. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where I could start going, hey, I'm going to add that Monument Valley <laughs> kind of, uh, stuff out here. And I'm going to break up because I use the same drawing three different ways. And I just broke it up. You know, now I got to break up this repetitiveness over here, which I didn't really do in there because it's not really necessary. But um, it's a pretty simple process. And when you look at it at the end, it looks complex. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. And that's an hour process. So it would take me normally half an hour. You know what I mean? Yeah. And when I show that to people, because I've already talked to people about it, and they're like, holy crap. They see the end of it because they go to the end. They go, I can't do that. And I go, watch the process. It's not that big a deal. 
you know, because yeah. the value system's there. I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I've been I've been trying to <laughs> to figure it out myself, and it, it's not working too well. <laughs> yeah. Any anything you got like that, just tell me. Especially right now. I mean, I'll put it into the pipeline, and I'll get it done. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So let's hang on. Oh, also, um, I put my sketches in around one oh five. I think make... I got yours. Okay. Let me see. Got my um my sassy preteen. <laughs> yeah, I did get yours. Okay, you know, what I'm seeing because uh, I looked at them a little bit before class. What I'm seeing here, oops, it's a wrong window, is a steady improvement. Okay. Okay, which is basically what I want to see. It's nice once in a while people have these big giant leaps. I don't think that's usually. I mean, in a way, it is. If people are working really hard, they usually tend to get big, giant leaps. I think if you're getting decent instruction, uh, methodology, and then you're doing this repetitive thing, I think you're you're um, you're going to improve. Okay. Okay. Um, the the part the the trick to this equation is that most people don't do um, they don't do the the iteration. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just they do one or two drawings, and they're like, okay, you're not passionate about it and one thing's I, I probably talked to you guys about this and I used to do it in a jokey way but obsessiveness is part of this equation I think I think obsessiveness if you really want to be good at anything is part of the equation okay <clears throat> and I probably said this a million times too but it's like I think about this all day long I'm either doing it thinking about it I think about it before I go to sleep first thing I think about in the morning I mean I think about this stuff constantly okay um, and I think that's part of it and then over this break I just subscribed to Masterclass because I wanted to take a look at that. And it's really interesting. But one of the things you see over and over again with these people who've accomplished a lot of things and are very good at what they do is obsessiveness, repetitive, you know, repetitive exercise, whatever you want to call it, doing it. You know what I mean? A lot. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing that I think gets left out of the equation, because you hear a lot of talk these days about um, 10,000 hours, right? which I think is great. But the problem with that is like, well, if you're doing 10,000 hours with no instruction and no understanding of methodology, I don't know what 10,000 hours really does. You know what I mean? You might be, you might be doing 10,000 hours of really bad ideas or bad. Yeah. Um, it's um, kind of like with archery their their like methodology is not that profit, that practice makes perfect, but perfect practice makes perfect. Sure. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. I try yeah. to do that with drawing too. Yeah. And, and look, you're going to float into like, I know when you're first learning this stuff, you're like, Ugh, it's a methodology and, and, you know, you know, and also you're going to get things that respond to you or respond with you and things like that from me or somebody else or another teacher or whatever, or you're putting things together and eventually it'll sort of morph into your own thing. But uh, the thing, whatever your thing becomes, it's better if it's based on good solid fundamental information as opposed to, you. not good drawing does that make sense yeah um anyway but like i said what i've been seeing is a steady improvement so let me um Can you stop that hmm oh sorry i'm yelling at my cat oh she keeps jumping up on the desk of her toy let me get a screen grab here But yeah, I, I changed my design a lot, actually. I uh, kept it loose, and then I went in and refined more of the clothing. Okay, hang on. Ugh, I got some stupid meeting. Okay, okay say that again, Andrew. Um, I went in and I, like, kind of... I feel I did a better job of defining what the clothing was and um, trying to go for that 70s style. Yes. And, um, I did my best to keep it loose and I only pushed the lines that like I felt I needed to push to make it read better. I think that's a good, um, let me share my screen with you guys. But um, I did have some problems drawing like bell bottoms. I don't really know when to have them flare out. <laughs> Well, that's more of a reference thing, I think. Yeah. Um, and it's also a design thing. I mean, they used to um, they used to sort of 
there was these pants in the 70s called dittos. Let me see if I can find a picture of them. Those to me like define the whole, um, whatever you call that, 70s look. Um, Finally able to um, work out of my office as opposed to having to keep moving around. Did you fix the Wi-Fi? Yeah, I find it's weird because I was going. Uh, I bought this one from Best Buy. Went down there, and they, of course they gave, they they didn't have stock on, which I knew was going to happen. So he gave me this other one, which I hate. But then it had been so long since I ordered the other one that it just showed up in the mail and it worked. <laughs> and it's so much easier now because I can just walk into my office and do a class. I don't have to like. I mean, I got to move a Wacom, and Wacom's got all the cords and my laptop and all this other stuff. It was a pain in the ass. Yeah. And then the table I was working on downstairs is just this little round table, so I'm sort of like trying to make sure nothing falls off. It was a total pain, but it's so much easier to be more comfortable here. <laughs> yeah, so I know. Like, uh, huh? You got some folks behind you, different background. <laughs> yeah. It's a good space, actually, because it's a space we've never really um, been able to utilize in a smart way. Yeah. Okay, so these are dittos, I think, right? And the thing with them was, see how they they taper? They start like about there, like the knee. Yeah. Okay. the The thing with these was was the cool, you know, the thing that was cool in the seventies or whatever. Um, was let me get this set up. was to taper them out like this. They kind of tapered out like that, right? But the girls would have shoes on underneath them, right? So they'd have these, usually like these big um, platform shoes, kind of like that. Does that make any sense? Yeah. So, and then you, what you did was you, you had your mom or whatever hem them, so they, just just above the ground so you don't you wouldn't see your shoes you know what okay. i mean yeah so you tall kind of like hide the feet yeah okay. hide the feet but it made you because you have platforms on underneath them it made you really tall it made you look like you had like legs that were another seven inches long okay you know what i mean yeah and i just remember they were like really popular in the 70s um you know. well i can play around with that then because um yeah I started, then, to, you know, yeah. and then I wouldn't probably go this way because your character looks younger. Um, yeah, she looks younger. Uh, you know, then there was hip huggers, you know, hip hugger ditto type pants and I mean, you know, all kinds of stuff, belly shirts, all that stuff. Okay. I like that all this is getting more designed and clarified, right? Yeah. Like here, I think you can start to push this you know, your line a little harder. So let's put our light there, right? Okay. And I could probably even put hands coming around there. Maybe this comes down here a little bit. You know, and I, I experiment with this a little bit. You might be able to get another little bit of mileage out of that in there, just from a design perspective. You know, I like, I love this um, collar. Yeah, I, I wanted I to. Uh, on it. That's great. I wanted to like kind of focus a bit more on the design this time around because, mm -hmm. um, like we talked about in the last class, I, I kind of got like the shape language down and I just needed to kind of make sure everything read well. So for these sketches, I wanted to go for like clarity to make sure like you knew what you were looking at. And I thought the collar would be a good touch because originally. Well, we're, well, what we were talking about last night in my um, illustration class, okay? is like it's it's something i don't think it's talked about enough which is refinement okay yeah and once you throw something down and you start chasing it you're just refining the idea basically right yeah but then knowing how to take that to finish right now you can look at different levels of finish i tend to like stuff that's not overly um um 
refined. I like it to look refined and finished, but like have some looseness to it. But that's just me, right? But if you're going to take it to like, because in other classes, you know, teacher will say, I want to take this to like a really tight line thing. The problem there is that the steps haven't been talked about all the way through, which is balance, which means when you start to go to a really clean line style, it better be balanced or it's going to look like crap. Okay. Yeah. And that balance thing is just like on these, you know, I'm going to look at these and go and flip these. And they're actually, they're holding pretty good there. Do you see that? Yeah. But what I might do here now is I might go, well, can I go like with her? I'm wondering if I can go. I'm going to do this real crudely. Okay. Okay. Because at this point, actually, let's just take her completely into another window so I can because I do this a lot, because now I'm looking at this one, I think it's pretty balanced, but I think there's some things we could do with the, um, with the pose a little bit. Okay. Oh, what happened? On what? It's like the, your, over, your overlay is still there, but the... I just, I'm setting up another page. Oh, okay. I don't know why I didn't pick that up, hang on. And I do this a lot, by the way, because I don't want to keep, and a lot of times I start working backwards like I'm doing right now, because then when I flip it again, I've done this thing where I've balanced it out, which doesn't feel right, flip, and then I flip it again the other way, and then I balance that out a little bit, and I'm constantly balancing. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I do it on paper, too. If I'm doing it on trace or whatever, I flip that trace over, and I start working on it on the other side. Okay, so it's the same thing, whether it's, Digital or traditional. So let's take this part. And again, I'm just going to do this real crudely. Because what I'm starting to look at is maybe. Um, And I knocked her back a little bit. And maybe even push the, the legs out a little bit. Like I'm gonna tilt them a little. And then I usually do this too, cause this can make a huge difference. I'm always double checking myself. So even if I think it's good, I'm going to usually dick around like this. Again, I do this on trace the same way. So, you know, what happens if I, what happens if I tilt that head a little bit? See how much difference that makes if I tilt that head? Yeah. I mean, it's very subtle. And then, you know, I can take these now and go, okay, I kind of like that. But now I can just do another layer and kind of kick those hips out a little bit. And maybe this foot comes out a little more here. It feels a little more confident. And that depends on who she is. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I want to get a little more you know, I'm kicking those hips out a little bit, throwing that leg back, you know, um, and then tilting the head a little bit. And with the expression on her face, it kind of works. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Then I flip it this way and I go, okay, it's kind of, I like that. Then I can start to go, <clears throat> maybe this hand needs to come out a little more. Maybe I just try different things. You know, I can try the idea of the big bell bottoms. This leg's coming out a little more. You know, see if that works. And it might not work aesthetically because it might be like, how come she doesn't have feet? You know, so maybe I could just put a little poke of her feet out here, maybe. You know what I mean? Yeah. At the front of her shoe. Um, just things like that, okay? Then I might also 
start to play with, I mean, they did a lot of like this kind of cheesy pattern stuff. Well, they still do. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I might play around. There was a very specific kind of flower, these real simple graphic flowers they did then. You know, it could be other different types of patterns and start to maybe play with that idea a little bit. Again, here, I start to push this a little bit. Because this here, right now, it's not defining like a design style, like the, the, see like right there where part is, I might bunch it up like that and I still take a little bit of this line just to, as more of a design element. These are fun, you know, is she gonna have eyelashes? Just graphically, I might just do the nose just about like that, I think that's fine. And then, you know, I could put a, a stray hair in her face if I want. This is going to, now the head's turned, the hair's going to kind of fall that way. You know, she could have really long hair. Some girls did back then. Maybe even have a little bit of, depends how old she is. You know, make, make a bigger statement with those eyes or with the eyebrows, whatever you want to do. Right? Does that all make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> now, what we're going to do here, shoot, let's see if I can bring that back. I can't, damn it. All right, let's go through a few and then I'll, I'll go over that. And it, it'll speak a little bit to what we were talking about, Andrew, how to take something from that flat idea of value and then push it into um, more of a finished idea okay. or more of a how to break that up so it's not just the three values. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Fernando's here. Yes? I'm here. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we have a lot of now who is he again? I forgot. Uh he, first he was like a woodcutter, but like then I was like I like more like the Viking the Viking style. So I don't know, I'm still like I'm still not decided on which uh one of those is gonna be. I don't know why this um, is not let me get behind this. I'm gonna say this is really annoying. Right there, okay. uh, like uh, my faces and the last sketches that I made, they were more like rough. I try to uh, make it more uh, stylized. Is that what you asked yeah, yeah. me to do? More design. More design. Yeah. I mean, you already guys. You guys are all starting from a place of. Um, stylization so that's all right it's just refining what we what i was trying to do with you guys is do the simple sh people breakdown which i also i gave you guys a video for that too right yeah 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 i, believe so. yeah. Yeah. I might have just done it today i'm not sure but um um and what bothers me is that you go okay let's do these people breakdowns and people totally half-ass it and you're like okay great and then you go, okay, well, the hell with that. Let's move into character design. Oh, character design? And it's like, okay, you're going to suck at character design because you don't know how to draw people. And I'm sorry, if you don't know how to draw people, forget it, okay? you got to know how to draw people, period. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, if you can't do that, like, I find that very irritating because that tells me, like, oh, you're not into design and you're not into being an artist. You're into playing video games. And this is sort of a weird extension of the video game culture. Does that make sense? Yeah. Think like a designer, like screw video games, screw all that stuff. And by the way, if you're playing, and I probably ranted about this before, if you're playing video games all the time, you're not going to get good at this anyway, because all the time you should be doing in this, you're going to be doing with that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't get it. I'd rather have a real skill. Like you can be as good as you want in the world at video games. It doesn't mean anything in the real world, to be honest. Right. It's not going to get yeah. you a job. Anyway. Um, Okay, so what is this clothing he's wearing? 
it's like uh, like a type of uh, I don't know the word uh, to camouflage himself in the woods like modern yeah like camo print yeah it's like, it's like a type of print yeah okay well I'm not getting that because I'm just getting lines does that make sense yeah I mean if you look at a camo print and I'm just making this up like here's his shirt here's his arm you know it has this sort of dark light pattern that sort of interlock you know what I mean yeah in a lighter one you know you can look it up it just it interlocks now what they're starting to do is pixelate it which is kind of interesting so that has mm -hmm. to happen also i don't have any um i think the face has improved a lot it feels much more structured more designed now again we can start to come in here and as you're drawing you know think about where your light is And then see how this is getting a little wobbly? This needs to be designed. And you got a good start on it, so you can just kind of design it out a little more. This is fine. Sure. This, you could have these kind of coming up from that. That's fine, but you probably need a little more. Okay, same thing here. This isn't a hard line. This should be a little more of a softer line. I can probably see a little bit of his cheek over there. Oh, it pulls in a little bit. Now, this kind of, this right here, this hatching, mm -hmm. you don't need to do that because you can just come in here and kind of go like that, right? You gotta mm -hmm. be careful with the hatching thing because it's sort of like, if you're gonna make a hatching statement, you need to make a hatching statement. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, and then here, same thing, sort of design that out a little more. I would probably unify some of these into one shape and then Leave a few of them. You know, I might even bring it all the way out here where he's got really bushy eyebrows. Got to have an eyelid on here. Probably. If I wanted to add more like, well, I remember the first time I showed you the, my sketch, you yeah. added like a gray part on his nose. Like, how yeah. can I add more like type of shadows to his face so it looks more like? Well, we're going to start talking about value today. Okay. A little bit. Okay, but... What I usually do is I just do an under layer under the drawing. So here, and then I usually just, I mean, you could find a brush you like that's just got a nice soft gray thing to it. I tend to, I tend to just go, okay, I'm gonna put in this value. You know, I'm gonna grab my smudge, a good smudge. Just gonna smudge it out a little bit. Then I'm gonna take my eraser. You posted your, uh... You sent an email with your brushes, right? I believe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so my smudge brushes are in there, which are, I, really I use nothing but probably five or six brushes and then a, a set of nine smudge brushes. And I, out of those, I probably use four. And that's basically okay. mostly what I use. Okay? Oh. But here, I can keep going with that same idea and start adding some shadow values in here under his ear. His ear would get a little more value. Probably his zygomatic arch right here would. And again, I'm going to smudge that a little. Um, his eye sockets would get a little bit of value. A little more here. Probably on the bottom of his um, beard and his, his uh, all this stuff. And then this. Right here. No, oops. Too big. You know, kind of clarify that head a little bit. See how it gets a little more clarified? Yeah, I like it way more like this. And then I might erase this back here. Seems like it's getting a little random back there. This feels very random right here. 
You want to do that, right? Yeah. So, you know, maybe it's a little of that, okay? Now, this part. Mm. So let's go up here and go. Has he got his hands on his battle axe? Fernando? Uh, sorry, I, I couldn't hear you. Does he, so he's got his hands resting on his weapon, right? Yeah. I think I would probably switch that. Let's get rid of this. Um, where that was going. Up here somewhere. Oh, sorry. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then carry it down here, and then I can put his hand here. Where he's carrying it. And what I always do is I put the hand, you know, just as a whatever a circle or just a square whatever to make sure that it's just placed correctly right mm -hmm. you know and i might instead of having what's his hand doing it's uh it's grabbing his uh helmet yeah i might put that one like he's walking maybe have this hand you could still be holding something if you want and then make sure that I'm getting, like, in this arm, let's say, or in this arm, it can be a fold. You know, if this is like a big drapey bleed, you know, there could be some dark in here. Okay. 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 Um, knuckles. I, I try to do big hands. Like, I try to draw them, like, mm -hmm. based on... Wrecking, Re Wreck It Ralph, that's a movie, Disney. Don't break them on, it's already been done. Now, if you look at that and you go, oh, that's a way of breaking down hands, that's cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if you're just looking at them for like, hey, I'm just trying to figure these hands out or whatever, that's fine. But like this kind of thing, it's going to be, you know, this thumb coming up, you know, the fingers coming over. And then I can just put a simplified, um, whatever you call it, knuckle. Th those hands, are, that hand's way too big. Um, and then, you know, make sure that I know this is a jacket, so maybe it's open. You know, I don't know if it has pockets, that can help. You know, any kind of detail on it can help me. This too should have like a, a fold here and there, like maybe one or two, that's it. That's all you need. Uh, maybe a seam right here. And then, you know, maybe I can... Uh, you think it's a good idea to add a hat? You could. Or, or you think it you looks good? Dry, right? You just go, okay, what kind of hat? A long one? Like what kind? What do you mean? Like, uh, I don't know how, how to describe it. Like... Mm, All this way? Mm, no, more like... Like the typical hats like the the ones that everyone wears when 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 they go to the woods uh, be, usually it's like a ball cap or something isn't it or or a, a fishing like a fishing cap about bucket hat like a yeah that's the I one think a wear. bucket hat will probably at least from this point of view will probably obscure a little too much i mean you could probably play but you mean like that right yeah i, it's know, not, I yeah. mean that can pitch a certain kind of thing you know what i mean Maybe yeah. he's got his shirt on in here. Maybe I got buttons in there. And I'm just making this up. You know, and then I can see maybe his belt buckle, whatever. You know. Have this leg moving forward like he's walking. Maybe this one going this way. Makes sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. okay. You know, if you're going for like maybe a bit of a Viking scene with this character, you could even like try to add horns to the hat too. If you like. If you want to go I look at sure. I'm what? Yeah, sorry. I, I, I couldn't hear you. 
Oh, like, if you want to make this character more so go for your Viking theme that you like and stuff, you could try to add horns to his, like, hat. Like, you could somehow, like, add horns to his fishing cab or, like, make... Well, I was... Yeah, actually, I thought about it, but at the same time, I, I think someone else is doing a Viking with that yeah. type of style, so I didn't want to, like, do the same. That's what's stopping me from, actually. Like, Yeah, just going. push through this one. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. Oh, if it's fine, I yeah, I'll try to go for that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And I, by the way, I've got to get into some point. We're gonna to have to kind of. I'm gonna spin. Oh, actually, I'll do it online. There's a couple of things I want to show you guys from a, um, just a technical perspective, like smart um, smart objects and things like that throwing a paint job on something, be able to change it very quickly, like all that kind of stuff. I have to get to that too, okay? So at some point we'll have one where we'll discuss that stuff and we'll put this on hold for a little bit and then we'll do that, okay? Okay, but Mike, let's say uh, I have my idea already. Mm -hmm. Can I start like uh, trying different poses or still just I like... want to see one final design on Wednesday or uh, Thursday. One final design before yeah, there's... Start kind of moving on from what we really want to do, okay? Where's Grace at? Okay. Is she here? I'm here. These are a huge improvement, man. But you're going to value, but uh, that's fine, right? Uh -huh. I love this right here. Hang on. This yeah. line of action right there, the way it swoops out a little bit. Uh -huh. Make sense? Yeah. You're starting to place the feet a lot better. I mean, it's a huge improvement from where you started. I'm kind of like leaning towards these two, probably. Yeah, I like the last one. The yeah, me one. too. I think the hair feels more um, fleshed out. Yeah, it feels more wild. Yeah, and it just feels, it's a good, it just is a good design. It feels good as a design. Yeah? Yeah. Now, you're jumping a value though. Uh -huh. So, what I want to do is I want to get one final line drawing, like on her legs here. This is where you can just start refining. Oops. You know, we could probably simplify Simplify this a little bit. Like, I don't mind that. It's going to sort of gather before it goes into her pant leg, probably. I like a little of that, right? Uh -huh. And probably yeah. a line like that. And then the same thing where these are going to sort of jump into the pants. I like the way this wraps around. Probably simplify that a little bit. I like it to the edge with this pocket. You put a big button on it, and then I can show one over here. And then I could probably get maybe a fold there. This, I think. I even like the way you drop the shoulder on this side. That's nice. Let's go straight through. Maybe that hand jumps up a little more. Like that, that's pretty good. Like the belt. Like this. Okay, so the eye also looks a little more refined on this one, which I think is better. You know, maybe there's a little more of a bulge with the hair. You know, there's a compression factor here because that's compressed against the head, right? Yeah. You don't want to overdo it. Actually, it bumps a little here. I think that's probably enough. Mm -hmm. Make sure you don't have too many pointy shapes. This sort of gets wobbly, so I might just pull that in. This is fine. Now, I'm on, I think I'll go over that on, um, on Thursday, what how we're gonna go into value on these, okay? Okay. But oh, and is would the ear be showing or no? Is that what? Would the ear be showing? 
Well, I was just playing around with it because I'll go, no, it wouldn't because her headband's over it. But I always yeah. usually play around. I just play around and I go, well, what if her ear was shown and her hair was kind of up over, over her ear like that? Oh. Sometimes I'll go, oh, I kind of like that. Or maybe then I'll give her a big earring. You know? Yeah. I tried that on other drawings. No, I'm not saying do it. I just, when I'm sitting there drawing over you guys' stuff, I'm just trying a bunch of stuff. No, no, no. I didn't say I'll try it. I said I already tried it. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Shoe kind of lifts up a little there, so I might do a little of that. They tilt up on the ends. Okay. Now, that also comes down to a stylistic thing. Mm -hmm. oh. <coughs> it looks more piratey now, though. <coughs> yeah, probably a little bit. You know, I might give it shoelaces. Okay. Point being, just clarifying the drawing a little bit, making sure that it's, re you know, that it's just getting refined. Does that make sense? Gotcha. See, see how it's a little off balance right now? It's leaning uh -huh, forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see that? I see it. Now, what we might be able to do here, and that's why we flip it, right? So now we might be able to go here to transform skew maybe just tilt her back a little bit, right? Okay. Might even be able to, this doesn't usually work that good for me, but I'll try it. Um, shit, where is it? Yeah. I'm getting where this is, hang on. Probably is not going to work on there. Nah, it's just taking part of it. But maybe I can come here under edit. They have all these transform tools under edit. Mm -hmm. And I might be able to, that's not going to work. Let's try this. I'm going to pull her hips out a little bit uh -huh. just to give her a little more of that sweep there. That's a little more balanced. You see that? Yeah, I see it. And then what I'll do is I'll flip it. Yeah, that's, that's better. And then I might go, okay, now I got a little bit of that forward thing going on. <laughs> that should be, and that should stay the same actually. It's a little too far out now. Actually, maybe it comes in a little more. I'm just like trying to find the things that balance it out, make it look a little more finished. Okay. And then I'll probably put a little um, seam right there. And again, I don't think you need to on this. A lot of times I'll tear the head off and I'll play around with that, but I don't really think you need to on that. You know, and then you have all this stuff. So just we're just trying to improve the um, the naturalness of the pose a little bit. Does it make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. And you see how when you flip it, you can see it, right? Yeah. It's really important whether you do it in a mirror, if it's on paper, or you know digitally. Obviously, it's really easy because you can just flip it. Okay. And it helps a lot. Let's go. Where's Haley at? Is Haley here? Yeah. I like this guy on the right. Yeah? Yeah. And the reason I like that is your pose is, is more natural. Right. Yeah? So yeah. like all you got to do here for him, and I think it's already here. This is just a nice loose sketch. Um, is... Yeah, you know, just clarify some of this stuff. So now it's just sort of probably close to its final pass. Mm -hmm. And again, 
we could probably take this. Because he's got such a nice flow there. And I know you draw a lot anyway, so you're probably just going to do a final pass, just whatever. But one thing that's kind of nice is that you sort of have the start of this nice pose here. Yeah. And it feels very kind of presentational. Just look at how those folds are going to happen. You know, come in here. I like this finger up too, this little, the way the finger's up under the flower. Yeah. You know? uh, and then it's, I think it's just coming in and, I mean, I, I kind of like it like this, but, um, you know, maybe just here and there. And then you're already doing it, but you know, kind of punch some of our lines. Just to, and why are we doing that now? Now we're doing it just to clarify shades. And you can see how hard I did anything and it's just a little clearer, right? Yeah. Make sure I can read these eyes, okay? However they are. But I mean, I think he's 90% he's there. Make sense? Yeah. And I, I apologize, I didn't get to these when you threw them in, but I just been swamped. It's okay. Um, I really like keeping the dialogue going with you guys, like right now, but it's just a lot of craziness right now. Or just a lot of production. And everybody's doing it. You guys, are, you know, some people I heard are getting overwhelmed in classes because they're getting, I don't know why some, I've heard that some teachers are piling on like a ton of work. I don't know if that's a good idea, but you know. Um, James. Yes. So we're improving the heads? Yes. Well, again, you're making, you keep making progress, okay? Uh, I think <coughs> we could start to, um, loosen these up a little. And also a little bit of line quality, okay? So okay. like thick thin kind of stuff? Uh, yeah, I'm always uh, going to say that. You know, give the nose like you know. Uh, let's look. At, go ahead. You gonna say something? Oh no, no it's, it makes sense now what you're gonna say. That guy's looking a lot more beat up than your guy. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna kind of riff on this. You know. How can I handle the eyebrows? I could handle them in a single shape like that. You know, that's fine too. Like that. But here, you know, the, the nose, and again, this is getting into like, there's a million ways to handle this from a design perspective, okay? Mm -hmm. But if he's got that kind of flat nose, I might go, maybe he's got a little more of a ball on the end of it. Does that make sense? Yeah. The nose will get this little ball right here sometimes, right here, the way it's constructed, if that makes any sense. Um, now, who is he? Park, Park Ranger? Yeah. I'm going to drop his ears down just for the hell of it. I'm going to give him a little more of a cheek mask because it looks like he's got a little weight on him. You, your is wider, which makes more sense for this facial type. Now, this thing. This thing here. Who's cooking? Who's in the kitchen? It's my mom. I to stop that. I to stop all activity. All right, <laughs> let, so let's go. Get this like a lips nice. Oops. 
you know, can it go, is it smaller so it looks silly, right? Or, you know, is it bigger? It's probably smaller, I don't know, bigger actually looks okay. So I'm getting that big sweep on the, um, on that ellipse. Mm -hmm. Now let's get this, a little indicator. Yeah. A seam here would probably help on his shoulder. Then he's got sideburns, that's good. I'm gonna, how old is he? Uh, I wanted him like young, like 19, 20. Oh, okay. So I could probably put a little bit of hair here, a little less, um, you know, and then I usually just extend this up right from the um, hat, you know, and then, yeah, you get this little, uh -huh. and then I would definitely put, And then again, sometimes I always put a little bit of tone on it. I don't always do it, but I do it a lot. And then a little more hair up here. And then again, I might do the little bit of this. Covers the top part of the face a little bit too, my shadow value, right? Mm -hmm. And then this brim is going to get darker here in the foreground. See how it pulls it forward? Oh, yeah. Um, and then maybe a little of that. I'd probably play with his nose some more. Eyebrows. And then, you know, does he have, if he's out in the woods or whatever, might not shave all the time. Hang on, something's going on with him. Oh, there it is. Oh, that's weird. I don't know. Oh, I know why. That's way too dark. I don't like that. Hang on. I don't know why this is giving me so much trouble. Oh, that's why. This is all your fault, Jimmy. Okay, so I'm going to give him a little bit of a five o'clock shadow. Right? Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're, you're doing it. You keep refining and clarifying and refining, and then we're just refining it some more. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which is what I want. But you see how it's like, you know, and then at some point, like just using that dark line to push, this would probably get a lot darker. All this. That would give me a nice dark shape. A little mm -hmm. value on the ears. When we get to that, I know I'm saying don't worry about value, but. You know, this chin can come here. It's a little too prominent the way I'm doing it. It's sticking out too much. I don't like that. Um, you know, and then, you know, I start thinking about my line. Here's my light. Get everything away from that. These eye uh, lids could get a little darker. Under his nose could get a little darker. Could vary the mouth a little bit. Under the ear, under this ear. And then again, Right here, I want to make sure that really stick pops forward. Maybe a little more here, and that's one idea, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah, okay, makes sense. Yep, should I just choose one character now, or should I continue? I kinda, like, with let both me look at him again. I like this guy. So what about you? Uh, 
Yeah, I don't know. I feel like with the left one, I'm pushing a lot more. Uh, that's but. probably true. But what I like about the one on the right is I he looks friendly, and I, I get a, a personality from him. Okay. Which I think is cool. So push, you know, you can push it and play around with it. All okay. right. The key here is, I think, with this kind of thing, is you want to get simplicity where it looks complex enough, but it also looks, it's also simple. Does that make sense? Yeah. Finding that balance. Again, Carter Goodrich is a guy who's a master of that. You, you tear his joints, but you go, nothing here, really. You know what I mean? Just mm -hmm. beautifully designed, beautifully balanced, all the shapes work together. And that's it, right? Mm -hmm. and that's how a lot of this stuff is. It's hard to, to get to simple, you know? And then I have one question, though, like technical. Like when you're using Procreate, like what file size or like? Uh, so what size do you use like the drawing DPI, DPI size yeah um, I'm usually um, gonna do everything at 300 mm -hmm. 300 DPI and the reason I do that is 300 DPI is um, print ready mm -hmm. and I don't really know what I'm you know especially when I'm just screwing around or something I might sometimes I land on something I go I want to finish this thing it's kind of cool maybe I'll do a painting or something right Mm -hmm. Well, now I might then go, oh, this would be kind of cool. I mean, it could be anything, right? But, Although this would be cool for my field trip coming up on Saturday. Cause, you know, I like to put posters in the hallway. I'm like, cool, yeah. blow this thing up super big. I can put some type on it and boom, I can use it. Or you might become well known or something and you go, I'm going to put a sketchbook out and you can grab all these things and put them in there and they're all oh. print ready. They're not going to be 72, but you can always res it down to 72 when you want to put it on Instagram and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So you can go down, but you can't go up. So I would just, to me, I just go, I'm just going to always do stuff at 300. Mm -hmm. you know? Unless maybe they're like thumbnails and I'm just thumbnail ideas, then I don't really care. But, um, and then sometimes with that, you go, oh man, this thing's cool. But it's usually a thumbnail anyway, so I can blow it up, it can fall apart in, in a 300 uh, doc, DPI document and start doing my refinement over that. And that will be at 300 DPI, so that's fine. Does that make sense? Oh, okay. yeah. But I would say... Um, just do them at 300. And if you're going to put them on Instagram or, or social media or anything to do with web or any that kind of stuff, just res it down to 72 and it's fine. Okay. But don't go 300 DPI this big. Because then mm. you're kind of, I mean, it'll go bigger, but I mean, just, you know, normal size document, 11 by 17, letter size, whatever. Okay. You do 11 by 17, man. You can go pretty big if you're at 300. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Is Jonathan here? Yes. You gotta get, I still wanna get like this. Um, Well, what I was going to say too, I think I started saying it, the landscape that I put on there, we're going to use a technique similar to that. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's why it's on there. It's, it's a technique thing. It's not about the landscape really. It's just a technique thing. Okay. So like I, we still need to get, how you're going to stylize that worked out? This, you know, this, yeah, yeah. So I think here it's actually a little more successful. But give it a sort of, and I do, wouldn't do that pointy thing. I always keep them sort of because it's a softer thing. Like here's a little better, you know. And then how does it? What's around his neck, you know? Is there a collar there? How's that work? Does that make sense? Yes. We got to get this, and it looks like you're working on it, okay? But it can't just sort of be, it's got to be, you know, does it kind of come out like that? Like a little more fur-like? And by the way, another thing, we talked about brush making, right? No. No. Uh, so let's we talked here. about talking about brush making. Okay. So let's look at something here. 
And I, I just, I just want to show you this real quick. I don't want to get, because I am going to let you guys do this stuff, but it's, it's important. Okay, this thing that everybody does, where they go, let's take a, Let's go here. Actually, what I'll also do, I'm going to talk about this real quick, and then I'll also send you a video of why you do this. This is a different thing here, but like a lot of people do this. And there's a place for it, and that's all good. But when you want to make a custom brush, you're basically just going, let's go bigger. And this one is just a stamp, just a stamp brush. I'm not sure if I can do this on its own layer, but let's try it. I'm going to go up here to uh, edit. Define brush preset. I want to put, it's going to come up right here. I'm going to put RIP. Okay. Now when I go to my brush, there it is. Okay. Now, you'll see people do this all the time. I have one of my classes do it, where I'll take a photo and I'll show you. And then we make some custom brushes like this with trees and all these different kinds of things. And we build this scene very quickly. We start stamping trees in there and all this kind of stuff. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Now, what people don't usually talk about, I mean, that's fine. That all makes sense, right? You select it and you go mm -hmm. define brush preset and you name it. That's it. Okay. I mean, that does explain the koi that I found. <laughs> The what? In my, in my brushes? Yeah. Yeah, there's a bunch of foliage in there. That was for a demo in class. Okay. But if I take now this, get back to my brush I like, and I go, so let's go, I'm just gonna try this, okay? Now I'm gonna do the same thing. Edit, define brush preset, and I'm gonna say fur. Okay, so there it is, right? So now I have that, which sometimes can be a cool brush, right? If I go smaller with this, you know, it's not a bad brush, okay? But I can come over here to brushes. Now I gotta find my fur brush. Fur, right here. And I'm gonna go brush settings. And here it is right here. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Yeah. But if I go up here, okay, I'm in brush tip. I can go, I can squash that. I can start to taper it. Here's the size and everything. Here's the spacing, right? So now I can space that out and I'm starting to get that, okay? But let's go, go less there. I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go to shape dynamics. And where's my brush? And I'm going to go to Shape Dynamics, and I'm going to go, now see how that offset it a little bit, where it's not perfectly, it's up and down now? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then we're going to go minimum diameter, that's fine. Angle jitter, see how that flexes it up a little bit like that? Uh -huh. Okay. So now I could use it in the background as like texture, grass, that kind of thing, correct? Yeah. Yeah. A little more jitter here. 
Now, here's the main thing. Right here in the middle, I'm going to go to direction. And now what it's going to do is it's following the direction of my brush. You see that? Uh-huh. Yep. Okay, now I'm going to go. I'm going to go the scattering, and I'm going to play with that. Now, that one in the middle, that's super important because that's where it starts to follow your, your um, hand, okay? So let's go here to texture. No, we're on scattering. So look, we can scatter it out. And you can see how this can become the collar on something, like a feathery collar or something. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. And then let's go to the count jitter. Some of them, you know, like, depending on what it is, they won't do anything. It just depends on what it is. Texture, I don't care about. Dual brush, I don't care about that right now. Color dynamics. One thing I do like is transfer. See what transfer just did? It feathered off the edges. You guys see that? Yeah. So we're getting all this nice. I can do this with, I can do this with, look. Does that all make sense? Yeah. Yes. This is the start of doing something that's actually pretty important, okay? Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna link a video right after this class to Paul Lassane who does this. And then you'll see exactly what I just showed you, exactly what's gonna be in that video, okay? But he's gonna show how he does it for his character work and all that, okay? Um, I can do this with the same thing. I could come in here, let's get a regular brush again. I'm going to get this one here. And then I'm going to go, I'm just going to make a simple, and I could even do this. Let's do it just one. Let's see what happens. Just one shape. And I'm going to hit it on one side, almost like a directional light thing. I'm going to go edit. Define brush preset. And then here it is. Okay, there's my there's my brush. Okay. Again, let's go up here. Um, brushes. You want to go to brush settings. And I'm gonna do the same thing, only I'm gonna go, I'm gonna turn my direction on. Size jitter. I'm gonna knock it way down scattering like more like that and then let's go to transfer more like that and now i could come in here and i can and depending on how i do this i could use that for a, a cobblestone texture i could use it i could take this and you know scatter them out a little more and I could come in here and go to edit, transform the tools we're just using, and go perspective. And if this was going back in perspective, I could use it as, hang on, I could use it as a cobblestone texture. I'd have to adjust it a little more, but you get the point, correct? Then I would come in here with a regular brush. And I could start hitting these to separate them. Or I could use it as scales on a, um, a dragon. Or I could use it on, yeah, does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Yes? So everybody knows how to do this now, correct? Yeah. And I'm gonna show you, uh, again, I'll link a video on here which really shows a really good use of this, okay? Where it looks like the guy rendered this thing to death and he probably did it in a half an hour, okay? All right, so. So, you know, that could be an option on something like this. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So maybe this fur up here, you build a brush. Like, I'm cool with it, actually, if you do that. Okay? But it has to look cool. Right? Yes? <laughs> yes. I think this guy's head... needs to go
out here more. Does that make sense? Yes. And then this probably needs to sort of do a little more of that kind of thing. And then maybe this foot's here. And I can just see a silhouette of the other foot over there, maybe. Right? Yeah? This, is the, this one here is the most successful one, I think. This one. I have a question about the anatomy, though, not the anatomy, but like the shape of the person. Wouldn't this be a, like he's like hunching over? Mm -hmm. What about it? I had that originally, um, this iteration, but I thought it looked weird because it looked like he was hunching over. Well, you, you have him hunching over though, correct? Um, I mean, if his shoulders are way up here and his head's down here, that's hunching over. Does that make sense? I was kind of trying to go for um, the fur coat was going over. Well, then you could probably go a little more. And I encourage you to tear these things apart. You know, more there. Does that make sense? Yeah? Yeah. You know, and then I, I encourage you guys to do this because you can just kind of go, we're right about there to go accomplishing the same goal, but it doesn't look as hunched over. Maybe his head's a little bigger. He's got a helmet on, right? The other thing is this is a three-quarter view, and this helmet here is a is looking at me, which he could be doing. He could be standing three-quarter and then looking straight at me. He could be doing that. But I might have it follow this same thing right here with it. There's the front. And then I don't see part of that horn here. That way it feels like it's all in three quarter perspective. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I would go with this guy. You agree? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I like that pose and everything and it's starting to feel pretty natural. And then we can go, let's flip it. Yeah, it looks like it could probably go a little more, maybe just a hair more like that. And then let's flip it back. I don't know what the hot key for this is, by the way. Yeah. And just start to refine. I mean, you have a lot of good things going on there. You got to, all you really got to do there is refine and figure out your fur um, interpretation. Okay. Okay. Yes. Will, how come we're going less fleshed out? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, well, the reason I did this exercise here was because I felt like I was drawing too much of like that one shape on like the far left, and I was trying to like figure out if like there was a better shape it could be like fleshing out. I don't know. Um, I think didn't we decide on one? We decided on a head shape, which was the. Uh, the bullet head shape that I've used oh, yeah, on yeah. all of you. But you said I should like flesh out the body. So that's okay. like why I did this. I, see. Okay, I, get it. Um, I tried doing it with like, I have a couple more that I like fleshing out. Like, I, I don't think you have it in hand. Like, I, I posted one like during this like meeting of like more fleshed out stuff. I think this one. is pretty easy. You know, you'd have to balance it, obviously, right? Yeah. But I think there's this has potential, this one. But get it, you know, this has to follow a certain logic. Like this jacket, if it's open, I'm probably going to see more of that. Some of his gut. I'd probably put, I don't really want to get into poses that much yet, but, you know, maybe a little of that. Right? Yeah. And then, you know, maybe this arm's kind of swinging forward. 
this arm's kind of, you know, he's in motion. And then this, you know, flesh that out too. Bless you. Right? Uh, yeah. I was trying to go for like, my character is like the gangster character. So like, I know, I'm not, I, I'm, when I'm riffing on these, I'm just talking to design. Okay. Fair enough. Um, what yeah. I'm getting at is that if you put this together, it's not a bad shape. My guy looks a little more like a refrigerator repairman. Really? Because like I see like a like a baseball fan. <laughs> okay, that works. Well, see, we see, right? you know, something like that, right? Where you, I'm just talking about from a body shape perspective. Okay. Okay. But you know, the, the next step with this is that when you're doing these, you want to try and even get this balanced, right? Yeah. So you know, okay, you already know you have that. Then you have this big bulky body, which, you know, if you break it down into a simple form like that and make this sort of work a little bit, you know, and there's a lot of fixing and, and then sometimes they just don't work, you know? All right. So the next one I draw has to be like way more complete, huh? Yeah. I think on Wednesday, I want to start getting there so we can start getting color and um, value. I want to go value color. And then sometimes we put them into a scene. So all parts of the buffalo, okay? Okay. I always like to do, use them as jumping off points for other things. Um, I actually, uh, I actually posted a couple other one, another one on the uh, Spring Break Sketches thing. I don't like going back into that. I want everything in there half an hour before class. Okay, I'm sorry. That's fine. I think I told you guys, it just starts to get where I, I, I was having a class where I just kept going back in and kept going back and it just got really chaotic. All right, I understand, I'm sorry. And I, I, I try and keep things not, hopefully not chaotic. It's not my goal. All right, where am I? Um, where am I here? Ian. Yes. What do you think? Oh, I kind of like it because I kind of like the the attitude, like the way he was looking. Is he like straightening his tie right here? Yeah. Okay, I like that. Yeah, I'm trying to just like, how do they? Yeah, and think about that. You kind of do that, you know, that little wiggle and all that kind of stuff, right? Oh, yeah. Or you do this kind of... You know, you put your tie up and you kind of flatten it down and you're, you know, there's a lot of very, I don't know what you call it, that um, cliche sort of mannerisms in there that are good. Okay. Again, mm -hmm. I might just shape his body language, kick the hips out, maybe. You know, you have to try all these things. And then, you know, maybe this leg is forward a little bit and this one's sort of back a little bit. Does that make sense? Yeah. That way, why do I do that? Because it just gives a pose a little more dynamism. Correct? Mm -hmm. And then I like this. And then have this maybe transition into the neck a little more. So it's not just the head going like that onto a pipe. It's the head like this, and then it sort of transitions into the neck. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And then you could probably put a little bit of cheek mask behind that. You know, this this is a this is a structured suit. So it's gonna stair step down like that. Like these structured suits stair step, if you've ever noticed that. And it really says business suit. Okay. And there's probably a pocket here. I mean it depends on what kind of suit he has. And then what we just said with these legs. Okay. Start oh, and the mustache. Make sure the mustache is just, you know, thought through. However you want to do that. Yeah, I look at the Pinterest name. The guy's name is... Hold on. An actor? No. 
He's from, I already saw him from the, the art station. You ever heard of no, that? Don't look at anybody else's work. Yeah. Figure it out. You can look at other people's work and get inspired. I have no yeah, problem. I already found on Pinterest the guy name is. I just don't want you guys, like mixing and matching other people's designs because then you're not doing your own thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Because the whole thing here is design. Yeah. Um, I just got yeah. through everybody, right? Yeah. Yeah. I look at the others mustache, how they, how big looks, how. Yeah, you can look at all that stuff and you can look at different interpretations of it. I get that. Like that doesn't bother me. What bothers me is when people just go and start ripping off other people's work, mm -hmm. um, which I don't really, I mean, I have, I, um, mm -hmm. hang on. Okay. Um, let me show you that. Okay. Um, what did I get? Bless you. Okay. Um, after this, I'm going to put that, that Paul Hussein video up. You guys need to watch that because it's going to show you why I just showed you the brush thing. Okay? And then if I were you, I'd go in and make a bunch of them and screw around with all those settings and start getting you know, um, familiar with them. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And Paul Hussein is going to talk about, because he's going to do a cat. He did the cat from Puss in Boots and DreamWorks, right? Yeah. But he has this insane <clears throat> fur texture rendering on it, and that's how he does it. And he's going to talk about the X and Y axis and how you know, the fur has to wrap a certain way and how you flip it and you flip it basically in that first window where I can, where I can squash the brush or I can turn it. So you just kind of turn it and find that right angle. And then you can start to build some pretty cool stuff. And then if you just make, if you experiment with different textures and things like that, you can just make some really cool brushes. Does that make sense? Makes sense. So what are we, yeah. have, what are we going to have on Thursday? Um, Finish line work. I want, it, I want it to be as finished as you guys can get it and because um, then I can start talking about value. And then we can start talking about Grisai technique and painting, okay? So we're still only okay. talking about the line work right now, right? Like Line we, work. I don't want any value. Okay. Do you want us to take like line weight for the value into consideration? Yep. Okay. That's what I want to see. I want to see like really beautiful line, you know, line sketches, right? And I don't want them all like cleaned up. Just like a nice finished sketch. Like, you know, that's it, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, some of you guys okay. might go, well, I like doing, this is my line, so I like to do like a fairly cleaned up thing. That's, that's up to you, okay? But if you're going to do a fairly cleaned up, really line, oh, well, whatever we're doing, it should be balanced and designed and feel finished. Don't, there's nothing worse than cleaning up a crappy drawing. And you can go further with that. I was in a guy's studio one time. I see this all the time, actually. These people who spend... 85 hours on a, on a, or more on a, um, oil painting, right? Meticulously painting it, meticulously glazing it, meticulously doing this, that, and the other. Then they put this thing up and the drawing sucked. So all you did is just put lipstick all over a pig. It doesn't matter. It's like your drawing sucks, dude. And you're going to render this all out for two weeks and the drawing sucks. That makes no sense. So when you're going to like a final thing, you want that thing finished, balanced, well-drawn, well-designed, all that stuff. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Thursday, we're going to look at those, okay? And then I'm going to be able to start talking about value. Okay? Okay. okay. What do we got in, wait, does anybody, what do we got in chat? Anything I need to know? We're good. You guys talking about landscapes? The one you just sent us? Yeah. Yeah, I have it on here. No, 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 I'm just looking at the chat. Are they being good in the chat? Huh? Are they being good in the chat? Yeah, they're being fine. Yeah. Those guys, I don't, I mean, I don't think it's interacting. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then, you guys. I'll see you on Thursday. I will put this online. Okay. okay. Thank you. You guys are doing a good job. You keep improving. So on Thursday, we're going to do values? I'm going to start showing value. So don't do any value. Give me a finished drawing. Yes. So for the finished drawing, just, just, to, um, just to reiterate, um, do you want just, like, one final sketch of the character, or do you want, like, page, like, page worth of give me a final drawing right now i just want a final drawing 
okay. of your character. Okay, okay? Cool. And, and try not to do the sort of, I'm not, I don't really want, I'm going to get into posing a little bit later, but I don't want this like, you know, rigid, stiff thing. If you can kind of just loosen it up, it doesn't have to be an action pose. I'm not worried about that at all, but just a, you know, just a decent contraposto kind of thing, right? Um, like Haley's we were looking at and going, yeah. Haley, you saying something? Yeah, so it's okay if I continue like drawing the legs on the pose one? Totally. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're that close, I mean, I go in and start refining that or I might just ghost it back and start working over it. Sometimes I ghost them back and I hold some of that ghosting, but then I hit my line work and they sort of marry together and I go, okay, that looks cool. Okay. So yeah. like, is it okay if the line work on like the final sketch isn't super clean? No, I don't care if it's super clean. I just want it to feel finished. Okay. All right. Like if you look at Carter Goodrich's stuff, it's not all like cleaned up like a line drawing. It's not cleaned up like that. It's his, um, <coughs> his finished drawing style is um, sketchy and cool. Um, same thing with Peter DeSev, Same. Th I mean, same thing with a lot of them. Like you don't usually see these things like super cleaned up unless there's some reason for that. Okay. Like if you want to go see really good cleaned up stuff, Steven Silver on his Instagram has been posting all these cleanup drawings because he's doing a character design for the reboot of Scooby-Doo. And oh, yeah. man, can that guy clean up a drawing? I mean, they're balanced as hell. And he's not even like hitting them all line weighting and stuff. They're just like perfect, clean drawings, but the design holds them together so well that they're really, you know, it's pretty masterful, okay? But you gotta have a really balanced drawing to do that kind of thing, okay? That's really the key to it, okay? Um, all right anything else okay then i'll see you guys thursday oh wait I, okay. I have a question what did you get my sketches uh in the oh. folder and or the yeah the folder that you put up today oh. yeah i do have them so i missed you right i guess that's pretty much right. likewise for me i was wondering if you managed to get oh, my yours too? hang on okay hang on then you guys i have your name here but i don't oh wait yes i do oh okay yes i did get this one These are still feeling kind of anime-ish to me. Uh, I was trying to go for like a more simplistic look. So I experimented around with like a style change and stuff. I tried to go for a more simplistic look. Simplistic is good. Um, so here, That needs some value. This, if this is an eye, what is this? Like a bandana? Yes. Uh, we, we can't see your screen. Oh, sorry. God, I always do that. Hang on. Was I'm this trying to go for like a bandana, bandana like wrap around the eye look to like, yeah. I'll probably make your ears a little smaller. I define these eyes better. Like what are these eyes? If I take this off, is it this? Yes. I Basically, I'm trying to go for narrowed, narrowed eyes. For what? I'm trying to go for narrowed eyes, like super serious and stuff. But see, the mouth isn't really defined. Okay, and the nose to me isn't defined. I mean, you can do something like that, but right now that it's just sort of a, and sometimes that works if you're just doing a shade. I feel like it needs to be something else here. I'm not sure what. Like more pointed out and stuff? Yeah, it could just be that you just show the bottom of it. It could be, um, hang on. Have I mentioned lately how much I hate walking? Okay. 
um, could be, and I, this wouldn't be the nose I use, could be where it comes up more like that, could be, you know, I'm just trying to think of graphic symbols, right? Mm -hmm. so, you know, a nose can be coming up like that, a nose can be coming down and doing that, a nose could have like a little bump in it and come down and do this kind of thing. I mean, there's just a million ways to handle that, okay? Now here, see how here we're getting this like, I mean, we're not really designing that. I think you have an opportunity there to sort of, however you want to do that, design that shape, but it needs to be designed. Right now it feels very sort of random. Does that make sense? Yes, because like I remember, like I remember what you said last time. So I took liberties to try to explore around with like different hair shape and stuff. No, I, that's fine, but then you got to refine it. You got to really give me that design statement. Okay. Gotcha. You guys are seeing multiple windows, right? You don't just see me, right? You see uh, yes, we yeah. see. I see like a side windows of everyone else. No, I don't like me being the big window itself. So. Anyway, um, don't worry about expressions yet. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about. Oops. I'm worried about um, just the overall design. Okay. Gotcha. And then we're here, like, it's hard for me to kind of figure that out. It'd be better if I had just sort of this, you know. Standing shape? Yeah, just a standing shape and go, okay, the arm is here. It sort of flares out here. Yeah. You know, it's holding the tennis racket. I wouldn't even worry about props yet. You know, maybe she's holding a martini in the other hand. I don't know why. Um, She's seasoned. She's she's just a seasoned person. Yeah, right. She's both. Yeah. I'm sure that at this point, I might go, well, that head shape is too low, so maybe I'll just go, I don't know where it went. Where did my head shape go? That's good. No. Oh, there it is. You know, and I can just lift it up a little bit. Maybe I'll tilt it. Maybe it's tilted up. She's looking up. I like that better. Yeah, because like I, I imagine the sleeves of her shirt to actually be up to like her elbow and stuff, kind of like a pulled up jacket look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Then that would be up here and it would bundle here in her hand. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, you know, and then I can do that. Then I can start to think about what's this hair shape. Mine isn't good yet either. Um, you know, my collar. And then, you know, how's, what do her feet look like? Or her legs or whatever. You know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, don't worry about props or anything yet. But just sort of clarity so you can, so we can discuss it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yes. So try to find a way to, to like next time just incorporate more of her shapes to you make more sense of like what she's wearing. Shapes. You got to refine those shapes. Okay. Gotcha. It's just, it's super important. And then Elijah. I'm going to look at the one I like the best. which is probably this one. Now, did he get, oh, no, he didn't, okay. Now, who was this guy again? I forgot. Explorer. Oh, Explorer. Okay, but this feels very military. Well, a military, though, could be sort of in that area. Okay, which one are you leaning towards? Maybe like, Explore type of a uh, hunter. No, which the I... drawings? I'm not. I'm not really sure. Okay. Well, the one that has the strongest silhouette to me is this one. Which one? This one. Uh, is that the last one mm -hmm. on the? Damn it. This one. Oh. You know, because I could refine that 
sort of square idea. Don't put the feet, by the way, where they're going this way and this way, right? And then one of them's up higher, which doesn't make sense because they'd be, one would be. Yeah, I didn't spend one. as much time on that one as some do, of the other you know, ones. Maybe it's something like that where that one's coming forward a little bit, okay? And then this. I think this one has, you know, and it's got this double breasted pocket thing. I put, I don't know, there's just more going on here. And how do I connect that to the head or to the body? I give them a hat. But do you see how we could take that into something? Elijah? I don't know if I could really see what is the lines are supposed to represent. You don't see that this is a jacket? Oh, I can see that. And these are legs? And these but are... I mean, like, on the face? It's, I'm not... Well, because I'm not rendering out the face. That's the, that's the landmark right there, the eyes. That's the bottom of the nose, and that's where I would put the mouth. Oh, I see. You don't see that? How hard or how easy that is to go to... Oh, I can see that. You got to learn to see that, man. You know what I mean? Because, I mean, that's how these things start. They start as abstractions, really. Okay? But there's always that underlying idea in it. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. So refine that guy because we need one to refine by Thursday. Yes? Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So everybody knows what they're doing, correct? Yeah. I'll render this, I'll put yeah. it up online, and I'll put the Paul Hussein video online right after this. Okay? Okay. All right, cool. thanks, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll see Thank you guys you. Thursday. Thanks.